like, please be seated. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that this from, from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. <clears throat> then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentile lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred on me that you may eat and drink at this table in my kingdom, and you will sit at the throne judging all twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded of all you that is with me, but I have prayed that you, your own faith may, may find no fault. And once you have not turn, turned your back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent forth without a money bag or a sack of sandals, were you in need of anything? No. no. They replied. He said to them, But now one of you has a money bag should take it. And likewise a sack, and the one who does not have it, a sword, should be in his cloak or, or Bible. For I tell you this, that sacred scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he who was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, 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 there are no two swords here. But he replied, Is it enough? Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo this test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me now. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. 
And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not see me. But this is your hour, time of power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, he looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, Woman, I did not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. Sure. <laughs> well, he is again. But my friend, I do not know what you're talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing him and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before the San their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them rose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found the sins of the people. He opposes the pay of taxes to Caesar, and the many things that he is Christ the King. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds, I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time. For he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some, some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me, accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us, so no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and released to him. But altogether they shouted out, Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Pilate addressed them a third time, What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. 
The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of certain of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there. <coughs> one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the justice we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in peace. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an, ellipse, an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, this man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance. Now there was a virtuous and a righteous man named Joseph who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the king, kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the, and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus Christ. Today, as we gather together to celebrate Palm um, Sunday, it's the introduction into the most sacred week of the church year. So it's a very, very important feast day and one that in initiates for us a week of great sacredness and great religion on our part, and, and certainly we hope to participate as much as we can during this coming week. On Palm Sunday, the first part of the ceremony, we had the blessing of the palms. We have kind of a visual introduction. The palms were 
looked upon as a way of welcoming royalty back in the time of Christ. Uh, someone come into town, they put the palm branches down, they come in over the palm branches, it's sort of like the laurel wreath for the Greeks, or it might be something like a ticker tape parade and the scoreboard lights going on and off when the Yankees win a World Series, uh, or something of that nature, some kind of a great tribute to someone coming into town. And yet, we know that the same palms were placed on the ground on Palm Sunday. Just three days later, these were picked up and People were so fickle and changeable that they changed their mind and those who welcomed Christ now turned around and had him crucified on Good Friday. So it shows how fickle and transitory the human being can be. We know that these same palms that you have in your hands this evening, but next year will be burned and the ashes from those palms will be placed on your forehead next year on Ash Wednesday when you say, remember man that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. Because we can be just as changeable in our own lives as some of those who had Christ crucified in, to today during the Holy Week. So this coming week we know it's a very sacred week for us. Christ goes into, into Jerusalem where he preaches on Tuesday and on Thursday of this week we have the Passover meal where Christ instituted the, the Eucharist and the Holy Orders, the priesthood and the Eucharist giving us the great gift of itself to sustain and nourish us on our journey through life certainly the most important celebration that hopefully all of you can participate in. On Good Friday we have the crucifixion and the death of Christ dying on the cross for our, for our sake and then on Holy Saturday night going into Easter we have our Lord's glorious resurrection, the celebration of Easter, the great feast of Christ coming back to life again for us. So it's a week of heavily, most, very important, most important week of the church year. In the gospel that we read today, according to the second part of the ceremony, according to St. Luke, it's a gospel where Luke talks and, and, and involves himself with some of the people along the way that were involved with Christ. He speaks to the women along the road. He tells the good thief that he's going to be with him this day in heaven. And uh, he continues to ask for us to continue to participate in his life. So. This coming week, is, today is a day when really we should look ahead and try to, try to plan our schedules, your schedule to put, participate and take as much active participation as you can in the ceremonies during the coming week because they are so meaningful and so important to us and our faith as Christians. The most important week of the church year, we look forward to the wonderful feast of our Lord's resurrection on Easter when we receive him worthily in the Holy Eucharist.